If you guys have yoga blocks, that would be great. If you don't have yoga blocks, um, grabbing something that you could use instead of a yoga block would be great. A book or a roller or a something else. I'm naming this class today Yoga Deconstructed because Lane has so bravely pushed me into teaching her yoga, even though I don't claim to be a yoga teacher. What I do like to do with everything is deconstruct it and rebuild it in a way that I feel like is alignment sensitive. Um, so I would not say that I'm teaching you true, real yoga. I'm really just teaching you the yoga that I think is most common. I try to pick out the most common poses in yoga, teach them to you in a way that I think most helps with um, ideal as ideal as possible alignment, point out problem areas as we go through. Um, the flow of today is not going to be as good as a practiced yoga teacher because I don't teach yoga. But I like to start in a seated position. What I find is a lot of yoga moves are actually Pilates moves as well. It's just that we take them a little bit differently. You'll see some familiar things, um, and I'll try and make, and make a comparison because if you know it well in Pilates, then you can apply the same thing to you doing it as yoga, as in a yoga move. It's actually a lot of the same things that, that you guys already know. All right, here we go. We're going to start sitting, and I'm going to sit up. If you can sit with um, your legs crossed over, you're um, welcome to start there. Just taking a moment. This position, I can't bend this one away, but if I could, I would. Um, you can take that one over as well. Uh, you're just going to sit up for a minute and find a really tall posture. So if you can, if you can't get a tall posture, that's where the blanket comes in a little handy. Um, if you're not super flexible here, uh, and let your hips open a little bit here. Let your back come up tall. We'll just take a moment with a breath in, and then exhale, and then another breath in, and then exhale. And then from this position already, you can notice what's happening in your rib cage. So as you breathe in, you can really expand that rib cage. As you breathe out, you're going to exhale and let your ribs come down into that diagonal to give you the support for your back, right? So I'm really closing across my diagonal. That diagonal line goes all the way out my bent knee um, on hopefully both sides for you guys. And another breath in here. And exhale. We're going to move from here into an all fours position. So I'm just going to swing my legs around and come right up onto all fours. Great. So just holding this position here, I want to relax and, and release through my neck, shoulders. I'm going to take a nice breath in. And then exhale, as I exhale, pulling that belly up towards the sky, the tailbone down, letting, driving my back to the sky, but driving it from my tail. Coming up and inhaling back down. So you can hit neutral. You can even continue wrapping the shoulders onto your back and opening your chest. Right. Exhaling, hollowing, belly button rises, tailbone curls down, head falls forward. Tucking that tail in, and then releasing. Shoulders are going to wrap downwards as you go. You're going to release and let your chest open wide. We really enjoy this opening because we're just going to get a little bit more um, difficult or open as we go. Exhaling, belly lift. Things are really working through the full range of motion that you can find. Tucking that tail. Really stretching your spine to the sky. Head, neck, relax. You can rock side to side, the head nodded up and down. And then find your neutral again. Great. From here, you're going to go ahead and tuck your toes under on the mat. And here, I really like to spread out the toes and place them on the mat. So if you need to lift up your knee a little bit to do that, you can. Spread out all those toes. Try and get the heels reaching back. I can just start with a little rock back, keeping my tail um, sticking up, so neutral or sticking up, almost a little arch, stretching those toes in the bottom of the feet. 
and then back forward. If you have more range than I do, you can go back further. And then up. And one more time, shifting tailbones out behind you. And then back to neutral. Here, you're going to take a nice breath in. I like to wrap those shoulders underneath me. I'm going to press back with my weight going backwards into my heels. Take my chest to my thighs and shift my weight back. Keep those knees bent for the moment. My ribcage is trying to drive into my thighs. I'm going to wrap my armpits towards each other, almost like I'm trying to squeeze something between my upper arms. And then I'm going to slowly, keeping my chest on my thighs, straighten my legs as far as they'll go. So right now, they might not go very far. They might never go very far if you're not very flexible. Um, but really keeping those armpit balls and those upper arms pulling towards each other as I stretch back with my chest towards my thighs and straight start to straighten my leg. Take a deep breath in here. I'm looking for straightening, sitting my, sending my sit bones up towards the sky without losing my armpits into the mat, right? Then I'm going to start pedaling out my feet, meaning dropping one heel, really keeping that other, the chest still pressing back, stretching through the bottom of that heel. So really trying to land the heel, almost trying to pick up the toes in front. And then I'm going to switch to the other one. So letting that heel go down so my toes get lighter, still spreading out those toes. But it's still trying to keep that chest pushing back towards my thigh. Big breath in. We're going to switch again to the other side. And still relaxing that head, neck, shoulders. And then to the other side. So we're evening out here. Really keep pushing the chest back towards the thigh. And then here, if you can, just dropping both heels and holding. Big breath in. And exhale. Every exhale, if you're working to pull those ribs more towards the thighs, keep awareness around your shoulders. Spread out those fingers. Another breath in here. And exhale. Here, we're going to walk our feet towards our hands. So ideally, I want to have your back be as neutral as you can. So we're going to walk forward. You can lift up on your tippy fingers if you need to to keep your back more neutral. You can bend your knees coming forward to the front of your mat. Here, you're going to, again, keep your back as neutral as possible. I like to rest my thighs on my, I'm sorry, my ribs on my thighs. And then I'm going to go ahead and forward fold. Right here, I'm still keeping my body against my thighs as much as possible. It doesn't matter where your hands are. It doesn't matter how straight your legs are. You can just hang out there for a moment. Good. Here, you're going to take your blocks, putting them um, to one side one for each side. You can go as high as you want on those blocks. Place your hands on there. You're going to straighten your elbows and pull your chest forward, lifting up your back. So here, the sensation should be pulling forward on those blocks with your fingers, reaching your sit bones backwards, keeping that back straight. So if that means bent knees, it's bent knees. If, it, if you can do it with a straight back, um, straight legs and straight back, you're welcome to. Keep that neck long in line with what you're your posture is. Good, we're gonna release the elbows and then you're gonna use your strength in your back to come all the way up, take your arms up to the sky. Inhale, and then bringing your hands down in front of you. Good, so here you're just gonna hold for a minute, take your hands out to the side, palms facing forward. I want you to just discover your feet for a second. So you're gonna place your ball of your big toe down, the pinky toe down, nice wide feet. You want to lift, um, the weight is going to be a little bit more forward, even though your heels are also down on that floor. And you want to squeeze towards your midline, grow the crown of your head up to the sky, and close the front of the rib cage a little bit, not so much that you're moving your back or your pelvis, just closing it in to itself. Shoulders relaxing, head growing tall. Nice breath in here, and exhale. Okay, so we're going to go through a little series of, a little series here. Feel free to modify anything as you need. We'll go a tiny bit faster, but we're still going to keep a nice even pace. 
So here, you're going to take a breath in. Exhale, arms are going to come up overhead. And then you're going to hinge forward, finding the either the blocks or the floor, either way that you want. And we're going to walk your legs back into the plank position. So here, you can have your plank as a full plank. You can drop to your knees. That would be okay, too. So from our little plank position, you're going to wrap those shoulders, press your way back into the downward dog. So heels are going to sink again, find that shoulder wrapped position. Big breath in. And exhale. You're going to shift your weight forward through your legs, keeping the legs super strong, finding that plank one more time. And bend your elbows. So again, knees can go down. You're going to bend your elbows and come all the way to the mat here. You're going to relax with feet under, hands come in front. You're going to pull yourself forward as your chest opens. And relax back down. Big inhale. And exhale. This time you're going to start pulling and then float the arms up with you. And relax back down. Hands back to the floor. You're going to press your way up again into your plank, either on the knees or feet. Roll through and open back up into your downward dog position. Heels dropping into the mat. Now take a nice breath in here. Make, make sure your feet are placed about the width of your hips and shoulders. Okay. And then you're going to take a step up or lift up one of your legs behind you. Now be aware of what's happening here. I want to keep my weight as even as possible over hands and legs. I'm going to stretch that leg up, but I'm going to keep my hips as square as I can keep them. Great. Then I'm going to take that leg up a little bit higher, even if I open the hips a little more. Stretch long. And I'm going to bring, go onto my tippy toe, bring my knee right into my nose. And really try and get it as high up into my chest as possible. And then send it back right back out. Big breath in, exhale. Up on that toe of my standing foot, pulling that knee in, round back, pull that leg right in. And stretch it back. Sink the heel, wrap those shoulders in, square off your weight. And again, exhaling. Pull it in. This time, we're going to place that leg a foot right down in front into a little bit of a lunge right between our hands. So here, ideally, you want to keep, if you can, that 90 degree angle, ankle knee uh, position. And then from here, we're going to just go ahead and drop the back knee down. You can keep your toes tucked under. You're going to stretch your arms up to the sky and open right up here. Okay, holding first this position, I'm really concerned with what's happening in your pelvis and in your um, control of your pelvis and legs. So here, what I'd like you to feel is that right heel is pulling backwards. Your front leg is pulling backwards. Your back leg is pulling forwards, right? So I'm pulling back with my front leg, forward with my back leg as I hold this position. Then I can take myself up and open the chest a little bit. Shoulders back as far as they'll go. If this is challenging, you can put your hands Behind your neck, drop those shoulders, give a little pressure to the back of your skull, and hold. Here, even though I'm arching back, I'm not, I'm not dropping, I'm lengthening and lifting. And then if you have more, you can come even a little more forward here. Great. And then we're going to reverse, bringing the hands back to the mat. I'm going to put my hands down, press up with my back leg. Take my leg all the way back up to the sky, back to that downward dog, lowering it down onto the floor. Take a moment here for a breath. And exhale. Great. And then we're going to lift up the other leg. So taking that leg straight back, shoulders wrapping in. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring that knee in towards my chest, rounding up to the sky, nose to your knee, pull it up, up, up into your stomach, and reach it away. Try and keep those hips level, even that leg extends, lengthening through the head and the heel. And again, pulling in, hollow, hollow, 
knee to nose, lift that up and right up to your tummy, and then back out again. And keep that weight even on all three limbs down. And again, up and in, hollow. Okay, this time, you're gonna lift up, place that foot down on the mat in between your hands. Great. And then you're gonna go ahead and set your back knee down. Here, we're gonna take a breath in, reaching long, lifting upward. Great, so pulling this front heel backwards, pushing that front hip forwards, holding that position, the arms coming up, holding their big breath in, lifting that breastbone to the sky, and exhale. And then your hands can go behind your neck if you need it, or extra support, drop those shoulders, stretch the back of the head. And then you could raise the hands up again, really finding that length. Another breath in, and exhale. And then we're gonna slowly fold forward again and bring your hands back to the mat. Great, we're gonna go ahead all the way back up, take the leg out behind you, back to that downward dog, and lower it to the mat. Shoulders wrapping in, heels dropping down. Big breath in, and exhale. Great. And then we're gonna go ahead and roll forward again into the plank. This time, we're gonna keep rolling forward, open your chest into the upward dog. So wrapping those shoulders, opening wide. Keep those ankles strong, knees strong. Holding to open, big breath in. You're gonna roll all the way back up. Your feet dropping those heels down. Great. And roll forward into your plank. We're gonna add the elbow bend. You're welcome to go to your knees or stay on your feet and then open up forward. And then you're reversing one more time back and dropping those heels down. Great. From here, we're gonna once again walk forward to the top of the mat. See if you can, if you need your blocks, you're welcome to it, or you can put your hands on your Thighs, press your thighs back, stretch your back long. Head is long. Big breath in, and then exhale. And then we're gonna follow all the way up, to standing, reaching the arms to the sky, and then bring your hands together in front of you. Great. So from here, we're gonna take a step back with one leg, straight back to the you into a lunge position here. You're gonna hold now this position, really working to keep the pelvis square. So here we can bring that back knee, pointing the leg straight down into the direction of the floor. We've still got that same sensation, heel pulling back, hip pulling forward. Right. And then we can take the arms up again, holding there. You're gonna try now and straighten that back knee without um, changing the position of the pelvis. Also here, you want to think about closing the front body. So I'm not getting a big arch in my back, right? I'm going to close and hold stable up through my center. So I'm pulling up through, zipping up in the front. So I can have this, if the knee has to bend to get there, go ahead. If you can hold that and stretch back through that hip, that would be the next step, right? I really want to watch this hip alignment as well. Great, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heel, setting the foot down and opening my arm. So here's warrior two, it's a small version. I can open the legs very far. This one, I have to really think about pulling this hip back. I'm gonna keep the outside edge of my back foot on the floor, spread out my front toes, and I'm still closing my legs together. So in that closing, I can keep uh, my pelvis moving forward from the back and back from the front. My hands can go out here. I'm going to circle my arms around and come let that back foot turn and bring my elbow inside or outside my front leg. 
So I really like this twisted warrior because here I really feel like I can get my pelvis square. So I'm not so worried about how much torso rotation I get. I'm thinking about pulling back my front hip and forward my back hip. So I can come to this position here, elbow here. If you have more room, you can stack your hands and then add a torso rotation. Belly is pulling in. Um, but again, it's really for me more about that pelvis. Keep that back leg really strong. Great. And then we'll go ahead, unwind it, and bring your hands back to the floor. You're going to work your way up um, onto two feet in front of you. Hang there for a minute. Um, see if you can keep that back straight again. Good. We'll come up halfway, cross away. Three. And then from here, prep your way all the way back up. Hands coming down in front of you. You're going to take a step back with the other leg. Finding that lunge position again. You're going to pull that back knee straight down. You're going to pull that front hip back. Good with the leg bent. We're going to fix that posture. Rib cage closes. Bottom presses forward. Uh, front hips pulling backward. If you have room here, you're going to take that leg back, leg back, but keep that pull of the front leg forward and the hip forward. Good holding here. Arms can go up to the sky. Keep pulling in and pressing forward. Rib cage is going to close in front. Yes? Of course, yes. And then you're going to turn that back foot open into your warrior two. So here, Ideally, I've got my foot in line, both feet in line. So this knee is in line with my hip. Right, then I'm going to move to the outside edge of that back foot. Right, I'm going to bend into that front knee. Mine won't go very far on the side, so you might go more than I do. Your hands are going to come out here. Right, so I'm working here again, pulling my front hip back, pushing my back sacrum, this butt and sacrum, as far forward as I can go, closing my front body. Great. And then I'm going to bring my arms circling around, and I'm going to come in with my elbow. Sorry, the back heel can come up. I'm going to come across my body. So this, again, is helping me get my pelvis square. My front hips pulling back, my back hips pulling forward. If you have more, you can place one hand on the other and rotate open. So I keep pulling that front hip back and the back hip forward. Great. And then you're going to unwind yourself and work your hands to the ground. We're going to step forward again. Here in this forward fold, stretch that back long. Again, if your knees have to be bent, they can be bent. And just widen your feet a tiny bit so they're about the width of your hips knees. Right, so the feet, hips, knees are all the same line. Let's slide up, press away. So really pushing against those legs. Stretching the back and head long. Working your way all the way up, hands over your head, holding right there. Take a nice deep breath in, and we're going to move into the chair pose. So here, I like to start with a little rock backwards, sitting my hips down behind and paying attention to what's happening in my upper body. Right, so you're going to let your hips go back, but I'm going to lift my chest and upper body. I take my hands behind my head, I can give myself a little pressure here. Elbows wide behind. And you can sit as low as you feel comfortable, ideally into a little bit, maybe deeper than I am, into a little bit of a 90 degree would be fantastic. If you have room here, you can slide the arms up to the sky, but that shouldn't change your back posture. Great, and then you're gonna work your way Back up into a standing position. We're going to take a lunge step back again, back into that warrior two. So turning out that back foot, finding that posture there. The foot opens to the outside edge. You're going to circle your arms back this time. My back hand is going onto my thigh. I'm going to find my square, as much square as I can get here. So pulling front hip back, back hip forward. Slide my hand down, and I'm going to open backwards into a back side bend. 
while I press my front, bend into my front knee, push my back hip forward. And then circle the arms around. Here, I'm going to go forward with my hand to the floor. And I'm going to take, keep my hand, you can also use the block here if that's hard for you. You're going to take your leg up to the sky behind you. Right, so holding this, again, working on that pelvis closed position. Right. And then if you can, you're going to reach strongly to that back leg and turn to open, turn to open up towards the sky. Right. So again, closing the pelvis, and rotating over that hip. We're going to come back down. You're going to step back again. Come all the way up as you're right back. So you're going to turn your feet to face, um, both toes facing the side of your mat. You want, again, not to be rolling in on your feet, but to be opening up, keeping those arches present. Then you're going to hinge your hips forward, hip, um, your body forward. Your weight will travel to the fronts of your feet. You don't want to travel too far backward. And then reach those fingertips to the floor if you can get there, or again to your blocks. If you don't, right. back is still nice and straight. I'm just going to walk my hands forward, pulling my arms, letting my sit bones pull back in the opposite direction. Take a big breath in, and you're going to come work your way all the way back up and turn to the front of your mat. We're going to step up to the front of your mat and switch sides again. So moving back with your one leg outside, taking that foot in line with your knee hip in line, opening out to your warrior two again. Great. And then you're going to take your back hand onto your thigh, opening backwards. You can place your hands on the block and lift up your back leg, holding there. And then if you want to add, you can try rotating up to the sky. Great. And then coming forward, the leg comes down. We'll come back to that forward position. Reaching up, reach in, take a, a breath in, and we're going to exhale, hands to the floor, we're going to walk our way back to your plank, and hold there, good, big breath in, you're going to go ahead and bend and open up into your upward dog, position chest opening, so letting those legs really lengthen and stay strong as you hold here, wrapping the shoulders open, coming up and over, hips going back. Reaching those hips up to the sky here again. And then we're going to go ahead and bend your knees and come down onto your hands and knees. Great. From here, you can cross your feet underneath you um, if you can, and then you're just going to roll backwards over your feet so that you're sitting. I'm going to do that a little bit in a funny way. Great. You're going to take your legs out in front of you, and then you're going to just lower yourself to the mat. You can do this any way that's comfortable for you. We're going to go down onto the mat, onto your back. Great. Here, you're going to go ahead and bring your legs in, lifting them up. Hold on to the backs of your legs. You want to take a breath in, and you're going to exhale. Send the legs away. Bring yourself up, sh uh, shoulders wrapping underneath you. Okay. I'm going to continue this press, so if it's okay for you, you can do this. If not, you can just skip. You're going to come up. You're going to lift that back up, though and see if you can find a nice neutral position in your spine. So holding up, if your um, sacrum's not good, this is not good for you, even in neutral. Right. If you're okay here, you can release 
the arms and hold. Okay, there's a number of positions you could be in. You could bring the leg lower, but I like to, I prefer to have the back elongated, the head reaching and the toes reaching. And then you can come all the way back down and relax. Great. So here you could walk your feet in uh, towards you. Your hands are moving towards your ankles. If you can touch your heels, that's great. If you can't, that's okay too. You're gonna take a breath in and you're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades uh, into the floor. So I can even walk my shoulder blades in a little bit underneath me. Take a breath in, digging in the heels, and I'm just gonna press my way up here. So holding stomach tight, glutes holding tight. And here I wanna work to open my chest. I need to do that though without killing my neck, right? So I wanna think about squeezing the glutes underneath me, wrapping up. I wanna keep my stomach pulling in and just stretch. So if my motive is to open my upper back, I wanna get my shoulders underneath and press my chest to the sky. But remember that head needs to be relaxed, head and neck. Pressing here, I'm gonna pull with those heels to help me lift and open my lower back and, and tighten my glutes. Holding here, and keep holding. And then slowly lowering your hips back down. Great. Nice job, and relaxing there. Great. You can bring your knees into your chest for a moment. Great. And then you could go ahead and stretch one leg out and then the other. Good. And then just relax, letting your body fall into the mat. You'll take a breath in and then exhale. And letting everything get heavy into the mat. And then another breath in and exhale. Great. And then just uh, you move into regular breathing. And just wait it for a minute with your eyes closed. Let your body just sink into the mat from where you are. Everything getting heavy. Seeing if you have anything that's uneven. Letting it just settle into the ground. And then from there, you would roll to your side. And then push your way back up. Okay. There's my deconstructed yoga class. But besides that, I picked these poses intentionally. And, and here were the things that, and I didn't want to use up all the time because I did want to talk about a few of these things. Um, the main things for me, so if you have clients who are doing yoga, this gives you a good awareness of what's in there, right? There's a lot more twisting and things going on in yoga also. So this is why for an SI joint, somebody with an SI joint issue, right? This is, yoga is super hard. Um, there's a lot of one-legged stuff. There's a lot of lunging stuff happening. And all of that is really difficult to hold yourself together, especially if you aren't pulling, pushing. You're not active, right? So the draw, and I think good yoga teachers do talk about this a lot. The draw is, is always to close the pelvis. So I mostly I'm working for this squared forward position, um, which is why... This one, right, it really helps find this bent leg, really helps me find that square pelvis. And then I can work off of that once I've got that. But the only way I can maintain this is that push pull lane. So the front heel pulls back, the back hip is pulling forward, and now I can hold this while I do. Right? So in all the lunges, that's true. And I was trying to make that. Clear it up. In a warrior two, I can't have a square pelvis. It doesn't exist. My pelvis is open to the side, but I can still have my activity, my heel in, my outside foot, not my inside foot, my outside foot pulling closed and supporting me in this position. Right? So I am really act this butt is on. Um, this back leg, this front hamstring is pulling. And then from here, I can expand myself. And I didn't do the triangle, right? That's also the same thing, right? I still have to pull back 
and shift. And then most people in these, I wanted to add this one and I jumped over it without, but most people cannot do this well because what happens is they get into these weird funky body places because they don't have the flexibility. I should have this butt tucked under me, mm -hmm. but this butt has to be in. Now I can take my body into that pose. But look, I'm flexible and I have to really work. I have it, but I have to really work to get this. So I'm not down here on the floor bending and doing something forward here. I'm really supposed to be in line, in a line, in a plane, right? So um, I think those are the main takeaways. The other thing is the whole um, forward folding business. So we did a bunch of them. But there's a couple ways to do them a little more safely. Now, I, again, I'm flexible, so I can get to this pretty much neutral place way down here. Like, I know Anna can, but Lane, you cannot. So what are you supposed to do? Right? I can have you bend, but my back is pretty neutral. Right? So here I'm pretty, pretty safe, and I can work a forward bend by keeping my ribs like we did the first time against my thighs, trying to keep that spine neutral. And I should be pretty safe, and now I can work on my legs. Now, most people don't understand that, so what I do is I just tell them to hinge down. To hinge down, go where they can, find their planks, walk, walk their hands down, you know, whatever. If, you, if you're staying on walks, it's fine too um, for the whole sequence, right? So that would be the biggest place where you need to watch out. The other thing, um, so in the camel pose, which sort of that last, the boat pose I put in there because it's our teaser, really, except that it's, it's you can see it both ways. Like there's somewhere it's super loaded and somewhere it's um, neutral spine. The neutral spine can work for a lot of people who have spine things, but it won't work for someone with an SI dysfunction either. So it's just not, not a best trait, but just in case that was to come across, um, that would be that one. And the other thing I didn't put in here intentionally, but I did want to talk to you about is the pigeon. And I think most of you have talked to you guys about the pigeon maybe in the past. Um, I don't like the pigeon. And I actually went through, I don't know if you guys have seen this, this is like the Bible of asanas. 21,000 asanas yoga book, it's really great. Um, but it's, um, I was looking at their pigeon poses and these are like, crazy flexible people in this book. And when you go to pigeon pose, uh, I could look it up for you and, and take a picture of it and send it to you if you want, but they're not all the way down. Most of the time, they're not all the way down. They're in a position where they're lifted either, there's so many variations of it, but a lot of the time they're here. Because why? Because you can't see that thing. Why? Because I've got to keep my hips in the same plane, right? I've got to keep that sacrum sorted. Or I can go down more with this foot in front, which I don't have the flexibility for it. This is as far as I go. And I can't go up, I can only go down, which is okay too, you can go down in a pigeon pose. But I, I can't pretend that I'm going to go any further without totally distorting all my alignment. So. I have clients who go, but pigeon pose feels so good. It's actually a really, really, really difficult exercise for anyone to have any sort of good alignment in. So unless they're really good and really flexible and really aware, if I opt out of pigeon, I've, I've sent some people in the direction of the double pigeon, which right now I can't do, but I can give you the idea. The double pigeon, you would sit and you would have your leg ideally like straight out, not tucked in. Yeah, so out in front. And then you would take the other leg and cross it on top here. So it would end up, this would be a half double pigeon where I've got that 90 degree here. And then I would um, have this leg folded at 90 degrees underneath. So it's a fantastic hip opener. And why this one is, I think, tolerable is because both my sit bones, I can feel them sitting down. And if I had both legs folded, I'd be quite easy and then I would do it on the other side. It's not 100% even, but much more even than having that hip flexor issue and the pelvis really askew on the, the leg behind motion. Yeah? So 
Yeah, go ahead, Anna. Just a, just a couple of questions. Um, so you first you said, well, well, A, there's the whole stretching hypermobility thing. And I know you were queuing to be active in your stretching. So I'm assuming yoga is okay for hypermobility if you're strong enough to be actively holding your joints in the right positions in in those positions. Is that correct? Yeah. And in fact, um, I think... Uh, I think it can actually be good for people who are hypermobile if they understand all of that. Because what we want with that hypermobile, like we've talked about how you don't want to be stretching to maximum limits. But you saw how small my, my space thing was. And that's because I have a knee injury and I've not been practicing yoga. If I practice for a while, I can get bigger and still hold myself in. If I have to hold myself in though that has to be my priority but holding in and lengthening away is exactly what you need as a hypermobile person right to get you need to be able to, to hold it in and then you do need to be able to move through your range of motion so eventually like, as a practice if it's contained it could be really helpful yeah it's really strange and then and then for SI you said really it's not yoga isn't really for SI and a lot of, I think, I mean, maybe not a lot, but I know I definitely have SI instability because of the hypermobility. So what do you, what do you say about that? Yeah, it has to be super small and only in the range that you can keep that pelvis square. Right? So lunges so, are okay. If you, if you work in that push, pull forward, back. And my pelvis is square lined up. So okay, you would perfect. start, yeah. And you would start in that bent, like in the back thing. Right, so I would start, um, I just can start on the side, but if I, I would start really here and then work from here, right here, I'm really square. You can see I haven't gone anywhere. It's right. that warrior too that's a little funkier to feel where you're square, right? When you're open, that's the one that feels I, a little scarier. Ideally, I'd want to just roll my hip Right, so my pelvis stays, but but my even so, right, even if I just start really square and roll my hip, right, I still get uh, an even line. There's no way in a warrior to to be totally even, but if I do it well and I'm getting stronger, like it would not be top of the list. This would be after I really strengthen. Mm -hmm. but if I do it and I keep it small and contained and I really rotate that hip into its socket, I can get a decent warrior too that shouldn't be any different than what I have to do in my daily life. Right, but if doing- I guess it's not warrior, I guess it's not warrior two, it's the one where you're open to the side. This one. Yeah, and one knee's bent, one knee's bent and one leg is straight and your hip bone, yeah. Yeah, that this one. Is warrior two. This is, I was just doing a tiny version of it. Yeah, but- Okay, here, okay, so, yeah. It should be like this. I should come from here, really, and be here. So this is my warrior two. And are you thinking glute meads wrapping under on both? Um, this is rotators. Yes, mm -hmm. I am wrapping forward on both. There's no butt out. Right? This is where you, you know, when we went to, this is why I like this one a lot, is because it really closes, and I really get squared in here, and I can still pull back. Mm -hmm. And press, so I really feel like you know I've got a rotation going on in my spine. So if that's not okay, then that's another thing. But that's if right. I pull long, right? So I'm always I need to always be working for that uh, energy that squeeze to the midline. So I really enjoy the ones that really close that. And the, the other one that is my favorite, which I think you guys know, it's probably my favorite yoga pose of all time, is my tree. Right. Yeah. Why is that a favorite is because I can work this, like pushing into this one and I get this really nice solid, I feel really solid and really collected in my everywhere, even though it's one legged. So yeah. Think Appreci that. yeah, that's really helpful. That whole explanation is really helpful. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Zaina, so Zaina, in the, in the warrior, when the front, if you can Say have the same philosophy about 
pulling back the front leg, <clears throat> you are working your glutes in a stretched out position, are you not? Yes, so you're working them at the beginning range and the other leg is working at the end range in the glutes. So you're acting, both are acting on the pelvis, one, if you if you think about that front leg, you've got a certain more interest into that because the back leg is so easy to get, right? And yeah. but you are acting on the pelvis with both glutes. It's just a little differently. It's just right? a little different, and they're uneven. So if somebody's super sensitive, you can't go there, right? But right, yeah. Like the time they're getting into this, they're doing life things. So if there's somebody who's super sensitive and they're a side joint. Um, this they can't be doing any of those lunges anyway. You would be teaching them how to take a step as big as a walking step, and that's it, right? Uh, so we need this. Is, this is definitely a progression. It is not a rehabilitative move. It's it's a progression from an acute rehabilitative situation into something bigger. Right. But more, I think about it more. As, you know, there's the clients that just have to get back to yoga. Yoga is their thing, and I get it. I mean, it's. There's a lot in yoga that we don't have in Pilates in terms of the meditation and the mental work. And actually the uh, Shavasana at the end is really powerful. Um, and that there's a lot of research behind that too, where if you actually lay flat and relax for a few minutes after an exercise program, any exercise program, your body absorbs the work you've done and you develop faster and better and stronger. It's quite amazing. But how many of us actually do that? No one, <laughs> right? So um, maybe we should add a Shavasana to our Pilates classes. I mean, really, we probably see more benefit. But um, so I forget where I was going with that, other than there's a lot of value. Um, and there's that meditative value and the value for the body in the yoga. So I understand when people don't want to give it up, but they have to understand what they're doing, and they don't. And I, I go to a group yoga class, and I could be seated next to people um, much older than I am, much less fit than I am. And I am the one dripping sweat, working my butt off in that class. Looking at me, like, I have actually literally sweat dripping onto the mat. I cannot go to yoga class without a towel, not hot yoga, regular. Because I'm working so hard to close, to tighten, to lengthen, to find that center and that stability and the everything just right. And they're just moving through without any work to it. I could move that, I can move through that like a noodle and not work the whole time. 